<laughs> You're funny, Chris. Meet Chris, who is always in search of fulfilling his sexual desires. Luckily, he gets a kiss from a beautiful girl named Pam, an attractive African American, who happens to be Jerome's daughter. Hey guys, there is someone I want you to meet. Pam, this is my family. Family, this is my girlfriend, Pam. Chris is enamored with Pam, going as far as stealing Lois's diamond to give it to her. That's my diamond necklace. Cool it, I'm trying to get laid. His unchecked desires push him to do whatever it takes to win a girl over. All I want is to go out with Anna again. It recalls when he didn't hesitate to harm Brian for a chance to see Anna, an intern at the vet's office. Well, I'm sure you can come up with some excuse to see her at the vet. Is there any more coffee? However, he faces an obstacle in Pam's father, Jerome. I don't want Pam dating a white boy. What? Jerome forbids his daughter from dating a white boy, suggesting a deep-seated prejudice against white men. White guys don't want a relationship with black women. They just want a notch on their belt. You're a novelty to these people. Looking back on Jerome's history reveals some contradictions. He willingly joined Peter's gang, which is dominantly white. I'll join your dad's gang. Gentlemen, we got us a black man. Hey, Lois, I'd like you to meet our new friend. Jerome? Loose Lois. When he was younger, he dated a white woman, Lois. Peter, Jerome is an old boyfriend of mine. What? Somebody burned down Jerome's house last night. He even lived with her white family for some time. But meanwhile, Jerome, you are more than welcome to stay with us. What? He was also seen enjoying a baseball game with white folks. And now he runs the Clam, a local bar that has been a predominantly white space throughout its history. Good day, gentlemen. Welcome to the Drunken Clam. Chris and Pam eloped and took refuge in a motel, leading Peter and Jerome to search for them. Let's hear their conversation. I don't mind having you in my bar, man, but it's different when it's your baby girl. Jerome, if you're so protective of your daughter that you won't allow her to be with a white guy, then why did you sleep with Meg multiple times when they offered you shelter after your house burned down? While I was living with y'all, I had myself lots of nasty-ass sex with Meg. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, you, you hungry? I addressed the discrepancy of this show in one of my previous videos. I figured it was just to rub my tummy. What a fool I was. Out of the way, I'm an EMT. Jerome's case is an example of such inconsistencies. Interestingly, this case is unique as it pertains to a character's personal beliefs. But white people have exploited and mistreated blacks for centuries, and I'm not going to let that happen to Pam. Another example can be found in Brian Griffin. Everyone knows that this dog is an atheist. However, in Season 2, Episode 9, Brian plays a role to guide Peter to understand God's will. Three of the plagues God visited upon Egypt when the Pharaoh angered him in the Old Testament. You want an explanation? God is... Yet years later, Brian appears as an atheist. Channel 5 News has discovered that there is an atheist among us. Local churchgoer and junior Christian soldier Meg Griffin has identified the atheist as Brian Griffin of Spooner Street. It might be overlooked, as during the early seasons, the character settings were still being established. However, in Jerome's case, the inconsistency is glaringly evident in season 12, a decade into the show's run. Why do such issues arise? It appears that the creators of Family Guy are suffering from a collective memory loss. Hello, mother. I mean, uh, damn you, vile woman, I must kill you, etc, etc. If they don't review each other's work carefully and put more effort into detail, these inconsistencies will not diminish. Overemphasizing consistency might hinder the writer's creativity, potentially making the show less entertaining. Yet, there are ways to balance both. As I mentioned earlier, deviations from the original setting can add an element of surprise and amusement. How were all your business trips? Oh, exemplary, Chris. With simple adjustments and careful planning, these inconsistencies can be transformed into unexpected plot twists, generating fresh humor. Take the episode that shows Intelligent Peter, where Peter becomes unusually intelligent. Peter, you sound so refined. Are you intelligent now? Affirmative. He transformed into an intellectual through a simple plot device of a series of business trips. It isn't inconsistency. It's a clever plot-driven gag. Similarly, Stu becomes a real baby through a DNA-manipulating machine, introducing a new aspect to his character. Doggy. 
speak, doggy. <laughs> With simple tools like business tropes and machines, the writers can introduce character changes, create new storylines, and satisfy audiences who expect new developments. Doggy! Big doggy! That's right. The big doggy. Hence, Jerome's sudden prejudice against white people could have been better handled with some backstory or context, like his involvement in an activist group or discovering some hidden history. Is someone there? You okay, honey? Without these elements, Jerome appears hypocritical. I had myself lots of nasty-ass sex with Meg.